everyone, and good Thursday evening to you. It is weather for Weather Geeks time as I try to make it through another video without coughing. <coughs> Too much, easy for me to say. Getting Weather Geeks online a little later than usual this evening. I just got back from a speaking engagement. Actually debuted the uh, winter forecast this evening to a private group, a group of landscapers, a nursery association uh, in the Canfield area. I uh, have given winter forecast talks to that group uh, frequently in the last 10 years, but not in a few years because of COVID, of course. It was so it was so it was nice to get back out and talk to that group this evening. Don't forget, we'll make our winter forecast official <coughs> debut coming up in a week on Thursday, the 17th day of <coughs> November. <laughs> we'll see if I can get through this. All right. It's going to be a long time before I show a map that looks like this again. Uh, high temperatures today, 18 degrees warmer than the average. We got to 70 this afternoon. I thought temperatures might overachieve today, and they did. You know, it didn't get as cool as we thought last night. It was a clear night, but it wasn't great for radiational cooling because we had a little bit of a breeze. And so it uh, did not get as cool as we thought last night, and with plenty of sunshine today. We had no trouble getting into the upper 60s to around 70. Not in record territory, the record high for today's date in the upper 70s set just two years ago, back in a fairly warm November 2020. November 2022 has been warm through the first 10 days. We're going to add a lot of blue boxes onto this graphic in the coming days. Uh, high temperatures are displayed, but when you factor in highs and lows, almost 10 degrees warmer than the average through the first 10 days of the month. We've been in the 70s for four times, four occasions here in November so far. All right, Nicole made landfall as expected last night along the uh, east coast of Florida as a hurricane. Uh, the remnant low now producing a severe weather and tornado threat from eastern Georgia through Myrtle Beach up towards uh, Columbia, South Carolina as well. And also off to the west, there's our cold front. This is the front that will bring us a big change uh, coming as we uh, head into the upcoming weekend, of course, uh, thankfully the severe weather threat with this front has not really materialized in most spots today. Might there be a gusty thunderstorm along this front before tonight is through? Sure, but uh, so far so good. Maybe a little bit surprising given the amount of rain that's in the forecast for so many places that there's not a slew of flood watches out as Nicole comes off to the north, but it's been a fairly dry fall in a lot of places in the eastern U.S., including around here. The rivers are running low. Uh, Mississippi River, the Ohio River, smaller rivers such as the Mahoning River, all running pretty low. And with the dry ground, we can withstand a two or three inch rainfall over the ma over the course of 15 hours, much easier than we could if it were a different situation. If we've had a lot, of, if we'd had a lot of rain events in recent uh, history, so that's why you don't see a lot of flood watches out right now. <clears throat> could, could the weather service hoist some later on tonight? Maybe, but. Uh, at this point, uh, we don't have a lot of flood watches out except for some of the Appalachians, the southern Appalachians down into North Carolina. All right, not e not hard to find our front off to the west this evening. Big temperature change on the other side of this, and that is the ghost of Christmas future for us as the weekend gets underway. Yikes, what a crummy evening for playoff football Friday evening. It is going to be absolutely pouring as these games get underway at 7. Now, thunder and lightning is not very likely at all. Can't be 100% ruled out, but it's unlikely. Um, it's just going to be just pouring rain around 6, 7, 8 o'clock. The rain will then taper off from west to east towards the end of the evening, but most of our games, unfortunately, are going to be played in rain. A couple of days ago, it looked like the rain would try to get out of here earlier in the evening, but uh, as we've gotten closer to the event, uh, the <coughs> overall track of this low, a little bit farther to the north and west, <coughs> means a slower end to the rain across our area. Here's a look at our computer model spread, as you would expect on the eve of the event. Uh, we've got a tighter spread now, so two inches. As a region-wide average, looks pretty good. Lesser to the north, more to the south. So uh, uh, two inches pretty much in the bag, I think, once you get down towards uh, parts of Columbiana County. Uh, but in Mahoning County, uh, I think you'll see a little less out towards Berlin Center, up towards Craig Beach, out towards Sebring. Still a lot, but maybe not as much as places such as uh, Boardman and Struthers and Camel and down towards uh, New Springfield as well. Up in Trumbull, same idea. A little less up towards Mesopotamia, quite a bit more down towards the Hubbard area. Generally, the farther south and east you are, the more rain you're probably going to see. Uh, Grove City, three inches, pretty good bet down over there. And... Uh, down in Columbiana County, <clears throat> again, maybe a somewhat lighter amounts in the northwestern corner and some three-inch amounts 
could certainly be achieved here and there down across the uh, central and southern parts of Columbiana. I look back at the record books at the wettest November days on record for the Youngstown Warren Airport, <clears throat> and I would suspect, I didn't look, but I suspect a lot of these would be from remnant tropical systems. Usually if we get a real heavy rain event at this time of the year, it's from some sort of tropical entity uh, bringing us the wet weather. It's usually not from thunderstorm activity. Um, 2.73 is at the top of the list, November 4th, 1985. Uh, we will be somewhere on this list by the end of the day tomorrow. Whether we're in the middle of the list or towards the top, uh, hard to say, but we have a reasonable chance of making it into the top two or three, I think, whether we get <clears throat> officially at the airport up to 2.73. That's a tougher call, but either way, it's a lot of rain. It's going to be inconvenient. It's going to be a pain in the neck to be out and about in this during the course of Friday. Now, we might get a little bit of a dry slot <coughs> for a time in the afternoon. Good thing this isn't a snowstorm. We'll be gnashing teeth over this dry slot. This dry slot will try to impact our area, I think, before the afternoon is through. So the rain might let up, perhaps even shut down, for an hour or two or three in the afternoon. But then it'll fill back in, and it's going to pour late in the afternoon into the evening. Saturday starts quiet and colder. <coughs> but we have added a chance for a rain shower and a few snowflakes even mixed in towards the end of the day Saturday. No snow accumulation with this, but just a damp, chilly, and just raw second half of the day on Saturday. As this next cold front slips in, though, the lake effect machine will, will fire up, and some lake effect flurries and snow showers will become a possibility again overnight into parts of Sunday, and some small accumulations could result, especially in areas north of I-80. So, yikes, 44 Saturday, only 37 on Sunday. Mesopotamia, Kinsman, Greenville... <coughs> some of the usual places when it comes to lake effect, you might get enough to cover the ground in some spots. <clears throat> That'll be the exception. Most of us will just have a December-like day on Sunday. It might even be three or four inches <clears throat> worth of snow in the heart of the primary snow belts. Geauga County, eastern Cuyahoga County, maybe parts of Ashtabula and Lake Counties, um, but down in the secondary snow belt, closer to our viewing area, I don't think that... Uh, We'll see much more than that. In case you missed it earlier on today, <clears throat> the uh, Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Pittsburgh both linked to a nice write-up of a <coughs> pretty titanic severe weather event 20 years ago today, back on November 10th, 2002. This included tornadoes in a lot of Ohio, and this was especially prominent in northwest Ohio. But in eastern Ohio, we had a tornado in Tuscarawas County. We had a tornado in western PA in Mercer County 20 years ago today as part of a big outbreak. I mean, this looks like an April map, right? Almost looks like the super outbreak. Um, or even uh, April uh, 27th, 2011. Uh, but this was in November, the secondary season, if you will. And so I would encourage you to, to seek out that link <coughs> on uh, social media from the Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Pittsburgh. It's a nice write-up of... Uh, <coughs> All the action that day, what transpired, uh, the fatalities, uh, some of the meteorology. It's really interesting, so be sure and check that out. Thanks for hanging with me and being patient with my voice and coughing again tonight. I'll see you back here on Friday. In the meantime, have a great rest of your night.